Hey guys, Mario here, otherwise known as White Tom on the Interwebs, and welcome to another edition of the 52 Review. So I'm about to head out to go swim in the pool for a few, which is why I'm wearing a very plain white tee and my swim trunks. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about the comics that I picked up on the week of June 13th, 2012. So let's get started with The Four Watchmen, Silk Spectre, number 104. So if you're familiar with anything Watchmen related, you're pretty much familiar with the Silk Spectre, both mother and daughter, Sally and Lori Jupiter. And you also know that their relationship has been dysfunctional at best, and, well, dysfunctional, period. This issue pretty much gives us a good idea of how it was for Lori Jupiter in the past, and we get it in spades. I'm interested to see how this plays out. It, it feels like things are looking up for young Lori, but you know, we all know that this isn't going to end well, because nothing in The Watchmen rarely does. It is really well written by Darwin Cook, and I really love just the look of it. Again, very Watchmen-esque, I guess, that's a word, but you, you know what I mean. Now, as always, The Watchmen's kind of like a literary masterpiece, so if you're looking for any wham-bam, thank you man type of action, you're obviously reading the wrong comic book. But if you're looking for some intense character development and just some heavy stuff that you know is going to lead on to some even more heavier stuff, then I, I recommend Six, Silk Spectre number 104. So far, I am impressed with the Before Washington comics. We have another one coming out real soon, which focuses on the comedian, so that one should be interesting to see. And more than likely, totally, totally depressing. It's pretty nice. Pick this one up. Next up is Batgirl number 10. Despite the fact that I threatened to give Batgirl the axe probably like twice, it has somehow survived. And it's gotten slightly better, enough for me to, well, stay in my blade. And I have to admit, I really enjoyed this issue. It's setting up for the next story arc, which I hope is longer than two issues. You know what I mean if you've been reading Batgirl for the um, last two issues. have to admit, Gail Simone seems to have finally found her stride and I'm glad to see it. Although Adrian Seoff's artwork is definitely missed in this series, I really hope he comes back. And uh, for those of you that tend to be the ones that correct me or point things out to me, would you mind telling me if he is coming back? We get introduced to a bunch of uh, meta-human villains who apparently have a goal, a vision, for a new Gotham full of justice. So I guess you could say they're vigilantes. But Batgirl has every reason to feel iffy about these guys. Especially when their leader, known as Nightfall, shows up. Now we've heard this name before, but I can tell you right now it has nothing to do with Bane. As far as I can tell, anyway. What does this group intend to do? What does Nightfall want? And what are their plans for Batgirl? This is all stuff that has been laid out on the table. Here's the foundation for the story arc, and I hope it does well. This issue was pretty good. Next up is Batman and Robin, number 10. I have to tell you, I'm really loving this series. There are some moments where I was just a little unsure as to what direction Batman and Robin was going to take. But now I get a better understanding. This, this iffy but somehow stable relationship between father and son, Batman and Robin, Bruce and Damien, it's been consistent, and despite the fact that some of the heavier, harsh stuff with nobody happened in a couple of issues ago, it seems like that stability is still, well, stable. I love this issue because we get a glimpse of every person who's been a Robin, and of course the current one in, in Damien. And like you probably would expect, there's a bit of, of anger, resentment, competition going on between all the Robins, except for Dick. Because he's cool like that. But of course the main source of hostility is between Damien and Tim Drake, who was the former Robin, who is now Red Robin. Confused yet? And this is... Unfortunately, this issue suffers from a few bumps. Well, I did love the dynamic between Bruce and all his boys, because that's pretty much what it is. And I love the hostility that between Tim and Damien, which didn't feel forced. You understood where Tim was coming from, but at the same time, you totally got where Damien was coming from. And I'm glad that that came to a head in this issue. 
What I didn't like about this issue was the introduction of the villain. I wasn't a big fan. I'm not understanding. It seemed like the scraps that Batman took out are coming back for revenge. Now, obviously, I, I'm hoping that they are more fearsome and threatening and a challenge to Batman than what we got in this issue, but so far, I just gotta go, eh. Still, though, I'm more about just looking for some action and, of course, a super-duper fierce villain. Hopefully that comes later. Hopefully we get that. But uh, for this issue, I kind of felt it was a standalone, you know? So, uh, as long as you kind of view it that way, shouldn't be no problem. Next up, Green Lantern, number 10. I love this issue. I love this series. I love Green Lantern. The dynamic between Hal and Sinestro just deepens and deepens, and you just see a bond forming. And not necessarily like a buddy-buddy type of bond, because I'm pretty sure it'll never be that but more like a deep sense of respect for one another. And it comes out in space in this issue. So now we know the dark truth behind the Indigo Tribe. And well, Hal's running for his life. Because, well, the Indigo Tribe are kinda unleashed and non-existent because someone lost a bit of hope. And no, there's no blue lanterns in this issue. I was just saying that someone lost a bit of hope. Jeff Johns knows how to do mythos, knows how to add story and plot. He does that wonderfully. His second strength is character development, and it's here in spades, the dynamic between Hal and Sinestro as I explained. Sinestro is more of an anti-hero, but he's got good intentions. We see that more and more. We know what he's trying to do, and we uh, and I cannot tell you how glad I am that Hal, while he not completely intertwined with Sinestro's methods, he at least is on the same page as to why Hal should help Sinestro, and through Hal's heroics and a surprising amount of heroics in Sinestro's part, we see a pretty satisfactory ending to this current story arc. However, <laughs> two things are still looming in the air, not one, but two, which is, and I'm going to try to keep it as spoiler free as possible. Number one, which you probably already know by now, the Guardians, they're up to no good. What was covered here is supposed to be a deterrent for the Guardian schemes. So, what part will the Indigo Tribe play when the Guardians finally make their move? We still don't know. But hopefully we'll find out soon. The other thing... Well, you remember Black Hand, otherwise known as William Hand? You remember The Blackest Night? Remember that miniseries? Keep that in mind. Because you'll see a little bit of that in this issue. Trust me. Overall, though, this was a fantastic issue and, and a consistently great series. I love it, and I'm excited to see what comes next for the Green Lantern. Pick this up. This goes without saying. For this edition of 52 Review, this is my pick. It goes without saying. You know what came out on the 13th. I know what came out on the 13th. You ready? Behold the greatness that is Scott Snyder's Batman, number 10. Where the hell do I even begin with this? So, for those of you, and myself included originally, who were very skeptical as to how someone can bust out with an 11 issue story arc and keep it consistently good and keep you consistently on the edge of your seat, well, ask Scott Snyder, because I don't know. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. and. It has paid off in space. This is by far, this issue, well, well, issues before this, but this pretty much has infinity times reinforced my opinion that Batman, this series of Batman, is the best series that I think DC has going for it. Now, you may have your own opinion, and feel free to comment on that if you do. But in my honest, true blue opinion, this is DC's biggest and best gem that they have. Maybe Batman Incorporated might take that away later, but for now, this is it right here. So, after suffering through a hell of an ordeal in a few issues, Batman finally has the advantage. He finally knows the location of where the Court of Owls is meeting. 
and finally goes to confront him. However, it's not as simple as it sounds. It really isn't. Because we get one more huge plot twist near the end. Folks, I was anticipating a lot of things in this issue, but this one I did not see coming. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, but Mario, or Y2, if you're cool, but Mario, this is kind of a cliched plot twist, and I'm going to say to you, you're right, but the thing is, in Batman, you just don't expect it. You, I didn't expect something like this to happen. Did you? I don't think so. So, by us discounting that plot twist as a possibility in this series, I was surprised as hell when it happened, and it makes sense. It was well explained. The plot twist was well explained. There was no room for error or doubt or a loophole or a plot hole or any sort of holes. It was explained. We got a glimpse of the past. The backup reinforces that as well. The backup story in this issue, which again was a wonderful read. And it just makes sense. And if you're one of those people that has read old DC stuff and Earth 2 and all that stuff, it makes sense, and and I'm I for one am glad to see that one theory at least came true about owls. Man, I Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo. I highly highly doubt you'll watch this, but if you do, I love you guys. Let me be real. You guys have collaborated and quite honestly probably the best team up there is and has have you have created a wonderful story that that I have been enthralled since the first issue since the first issue not every comic every comic that I'm reading I can't even say that about since the first issue I have been enthralled I have been hooked I have been in suspense you have had me hooked, and it's been consistent. It hasn't fallen. It's only risen, and it's and and it. I don't. I can't explain it. All I know is that I'm going with what I feel. I'm going with what I read, and I gotta tell you, this is the best comic series that I'm reading to date. Overall, I I have no clue how it's gonna end. The next issue will conclude this story arc. Eleven issues, folks. And not one of them was a dud, or boring, or stupid. These guys have done something that very few can claim that they've done. Uh, they have made a story arc that is worthy of talking about for years to come. Well done, gentlemen. Hats off to you. That's it for now. What do you think? What, what do you feel about the stuff that I covered today? And is there anything else you would like to recommend to me? Like, leave a review, or, or a comment, or a question, or whatever, on the commentary plot. I do read them, and I do try to get back to them as soon as I possibly can. Once again, guys, thank you for bearing with me in these um, uncertain times. Hope I uh, put this out on a reasonable time. And I hope to see you around the same time next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Live Nerdcore. Why to I'm out.